Hey everyone, and welcome to Design Hub. Today, we're gonna dive into one of the most critical and honestly, one of the most misunderstood parts of SolidWorks flow simulation, meshing. If you've ever run a simulation and felt like the results were just a total shot in the dark, you are in exactly the right place. We're gonna break this whole thing down step by step. So let's just kick things off with a big question. Have you ever spent hours, maybe even days, setting up a simulation only to get results that look absolutely nothing like what happens in the real world? Yeah, you are not alone. And I'll tell you, the number one reason for that disconnect is almost always a poor mesh. It's the invisible foundation of your entire simulation, and today we're going to learn how to build it right. First things first, before we can even think about controlling the mesh, we have to really understand what it is. This whole section is about how your nice, clean 3D model gets chopped up and translated into a solvable grid. That's the language the software actually understands. You know, the best way to think about a mesh is to compare it to the pixels in a digital photo. If you have too few pixels, what do you get? A blurry, blocky, unrecognizable image. It is exactly the same in CFD. A coarse, clunky mesh gives you a fuzzy, inaccurate picture of the physics. But a fine, detailed mesh? That gives you a sharp, trustworthy result. Inside every single one of those tiny cells, the software is crunching the numbers on those complex equations that tell us how the fluid's going to behave. So SolidWorks uses what's called a Cartesian mesh, which is just a fancy way of saying it thinks in little cubes. It looks at every single one of these cubes and sorts it into one of three buckets. You've got your fluid cells, that's where all the action is happening. Then you have solid cells, which the software pretty much ignores for the flow part. And then you've got partial cells. Now these, these are the most important ones because they define that critical boundary right where the fluid touches the solid. Getting these right is the absolute key to an accurate simulation. So how do we get those crucial partial cells right, especially when you've got tricky curves or sharp corners? Well, the answer is a process called refinement. This is the magic trick we use to increase the resolution of our simulation, telling the software, hey, focus your power right here. This is the important spot. So how does this refinement actually work? Well, it follows one simple but really powerful rule. Every single time you bump up the refinement level by one, a single parent cell splits into these eight smaller child cells. It's this exponential growth that lets us zoom in and capture incredibly fine details in our geometry. But there is a limit. SolidWorks lets you go up to a maximum of seven refinement levels. And since each level multiplies the cell count by eight, you can see how this quickly becomes a really critical balancing act. You need enough refinement to get the right answer, but not so much that your computer just grinds to a halt for a week. And that brings us to the first really big choice you have to make every time you set up a study. Are you going to let the software do the driving with automatic meshing? Or are you going to grab the steering wheel and take full control with a manual mesh? Look. Automatic mesh is fantastic for getting a quick first look. It's fast, it gives you a ballpark idea of the flow, and it's perfect for early design checks. But, and this is a big but, for results that you can actually trust, results you'd bet your job on or base a major design decision on, you have to switch to manual. Manual mode is where you, the engineer, bring your expertise to the table and guide the solver to get the accuracy exactly where it matters most. Okay, so if manual meshing is the ultimate goal, how do we do it efficiently without just getting lost in a sea of settings? Well, the pros use a simple, repeatable workflow. Think of it as a proven path that takes you from a broad, kind of fuzzy look to a finely tuned, highly accurate analysis. This course-defined strategy is everything. You start simple, get a baseline result, and then you systematically add complexity where it's needed. This method saves a ton of time. It stops you from accidentally creating a billion cell mesh on your first go, and it makes sure you only spend that precious computational power where it's actually going to improve your answer. Now, creating a beautiful mesh is one thing, but how do you prove that it's good enough? How do you know when you can finally stop refining and trust the numbers? We need a process to validate our work, to make sure our results are totally trustworthy. This quote right here, this captures the entire principle of what's called a mesh independent study. This is the professional standard for validating a CFD model. The whole idea is to prove that your result, let's say it's pressure drop across a valve, isn't changing anymore, even if you make the mesh even finer. Your answer has become independent of the mesh. So here's what that looks like in the real world. We run the same simulation three times. On our coarse mesh, we get a pressure drop of 9.8 kilopascals. Okay. Then we double the cell count and, whoa, the result jumps up to 10.1. That's a 3% change. 
That's a huge red flag telling us that first mesh wasn't good enough. But now look what happens when we double it again. The result barely even budges, changing by less than half a percent. And visually, this chart just makes it crystal clear. You see that error just plummet between the medium and the fine mesh? That tiny change is the signal we've been waiting for. It tells us our solution is stabilized, it's converged, we can now trust this result and be confident that just adding more cells would be a total waste of time and computer power. All right, we've covered the core theory, we've walked through the workflow, and we've talked about the validation method. Now it's time to roll up our sleeves and actually put all of this into practice. So let's just boil it all down. These are the key principles, your checklist for every simulation. Start course and build up. Focus your refinement where it matters, near the walls. Always, always, always validate with a mesh study. Find that sweet spot between accuracy and speed and be smart about where you spend your cells. Do this and you'll get reliable, efficient simulations every single time. And to help you get started right away, here's your first exercise. It's super simple. Take a one meter long pipe. Run it with three different global mesh levels, a coarse level two, a medium level four, and a fine level six. For each run, just write down the cell count and the pressure drop. When you plot that data, you will build your very first mesh independence curve and see this entire theory come to life. You know, by understanding and applying this workflow, you're gonna move from just being someone who clicks buttons to someone who is truly engineering their simulations. You gain the power to not just get an answer, but to prove that your answer is the right answer. So are you ready to take control? Thanks for joining us here on Design Hub.